Good evening, Quinnipiac, and welcome to the Q30 Nightcast. I'm Lisa Capobianco. And I'm Taylor Popolars. Have you been having trouble with Bobcat Net? Well, the network is receiving a full upgrade. The project started last summer when QU partnered with Aruba Networks, a leading provider of access solutions. The university is currently switching its older access switches across all three campuses. School officials say the new project will improve the speed of Bobcat Net as more students upgrade to tablets and smartphones. The strength of some fellow Bobcats were put to the test. A powerlifting competition was hosted at the Mount Carmel Fitness Center Monday night. Prizes were given to the top three contestants. Any competitors who lifted 1,000 pounds received a free 1,000-pound club t-shirt. Both guys and girls could participate. Competitors were tested on squat, deadlift, and bench press. And more things Irish are coming to Hamden. On March 14th, Danny Quinn, an Irish-American folk musician, will perform a concert at Ireland's Great Hunger Museum on Whitney Avenue. Quinn has been performing for over 30 years all over the world, including the U.S., Canada, England, and of course, Ireland. The concert starts at 5.30 and will be free for all those who attend. And Quinnipiac is celebrating Earth Day. For two months, QU will hold different events and activities, including volleyball tournaments, cook-offs, and obstacle courses. The official Earth Day event will be held on April 18th at Burt Con Court. Students will be able to log their participation in these events, and the two students that attend the most events will win a prize to be announced later. Members of the QU Sustainability Committee are hoping that these events will increase awareness of environmental issues and promote sustainability. So Lisa, I heard last night on campus that there was this huge event called St. Baldrick's where a bunch, I'm not sure the exact amount of people, I'm sure it was hundreds, got together and shaved their heads for cancer research. Supposedly thousands of dollars were made and our own Matt made I a pack. That. Tuesday, March 5th, QU students came out by the dozens in support of St. Baldrick's and their fight against childhood cancer. I'm here with Connor Hadley, the organizer of St. Baldrick's. Connor, what does St. Baldrick's mean? St. Baldrick's means everything. Um, I started this event because my mom's a cancer survivor. I didn't start the event. Um, I started getting involved with this event because my mom's a cancer survivor. And once I helped out the event, I started just kind of fell in love with it. Um, and when I got the chance to be the executive board position on this committee this year and run the event, it was just like, what exactly does St. Baldrick's do for um, So, pediatric cancer research is the most underfunded type of cancer research, and what St. Baldrick's does is try and prove that. So, all of the money, 100% of the money that we raise here tonight and that we raise over the last couple of weeks for this event goes straight to the St. Baldrick's organization, which goes right to fund the research. How does it feel? It feels great. I love it. It's a great feeling. And What are you doing right now, Chris? I am cutting some sandwiches for St. Baldrick's. Are you shaving your head tonight, Chris? I, I am indeed shaving my head tonight. Are you excited to shave your head? Are you nervous to shave your head? I am a little nervous to shave my head, but I am more than excited to help support this amazing cause. Thank you, Chris. St. Baldrick's works towards a cure for childhood cancer. This year, Quinnipiac had Logan and his mom join us. Logan is a cancer survivor himself, and his mom explained. He is five and a half years old, born with Down syndrome in 2007, and three years later, he was diagnosed with leukemia. He was in his head with leukemia, and um, currently he's in remission. So he um, got diagnosed in 2010, so two and a half years in, he's in remission, thank God. He's doing excellent.
Thank you, Shaving Head. Sorry, you would have had your head shaved in time for a hearing. We'll keep going. Thank you. Bobcats eagerly await their turn to get their heads shaved. Are you shaving your head this year? Yes, I am. Um, why are you? Is there any specific reason you're shaving your head? What does St. Paul's explain to you? I'm Matt Morris. Now back. Before spending your spring break near the water, here are a few safety tips. You should secure all personal property in a locker and keep it locked when unattended. Stay close to your friends and don't accept anything from people you don't know. And you should always keep an eye on your drink and your friend's drink. It's also important to stay cool and hydrated. And before you get your tan on, be sure to protect yourself from the sun. But most of all, have a fun spring break. Coming up on the news, the big event wants you. Up next, we'll talk to the students behind Quinnipiac's biggest day of service and how you can get involved, too. And studies show that watching too much TV is bad, but what if it's just on in the background? Q30's Noah Golden investigates. Plus, the battle against the bulge wages on, especially in low-income neighborhoods. After the break, Q30's own Samantha Plora takes a look. These stories and more are on the way. You're watching Q30 News. We'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. Welcome back everyone and I'm here with Catherine and Keelan. Um, they're both students at QU and they're involved with the big event. So thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, no problem. So the big event is a great way to give back to the communities in and outside of Hamden. Um, how did you decide to get involved? Um, I started my sophomore year. I was really interested in getting involved in planning the big event. Uh, so I started on the, as the site logistics co-chair. Um, Catherine. Yeah, I started my freshman year. I was really involved in high school and I really wanted to give back when I came to college. So I was the event uh, logistics co chair my freshman year. Okay. And now we're both the co directors of the big event. Nice. And what kind of service projects are there in the big event? Um, well, this year we actually have over 100 sites that students and faculty and alumni are going to go out to. Um, we have anywhere from a Girl Scouts campsite, so they're going to help build tents to cleaning up like Sleeping Giant um, and also animal shelters. They're even going to senior citizen senior centers. centers. Yeah. And we how was the turnout last year for the big event? We had about 1350 volunteers between faculty, grads, alumni, and just student volunteers here. So it was a good turnout, more than we were expecting. And how many do you expect this year? Uh, we're hoping for 1500. That's great. What do you hope that volunteers get out of this event? 
we hope they realize how important it is to give back, especially because we're such a presence here in Hamden and in New Haven, and that they really, it is really big for the community. Like they appreciate so much how we come out and give up our Saturday for them. And what have you two learned um, personally from this experience? Um, I've learned that it is very important to give back, and it doesn't just affect your, like it does make you feel good, but it also really affects the whole community, and by doing it, you also influence other people and impact them. I would have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> and how can students get involved if they want to participate in the big event? Um, they can log on to Do You QU, and there's a registration form under Quinnipiac's big event. Yes. And they have until this Friday to sign up. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having, for coming to the show tonight. Thank, Thank you, you, for, you having for having us. I'm back to the desk. Thanks, Lisa. Kids are spending a record amount of time watching TV, both actively and with the television on in the background. Our own Noah, Noah Golden tells us why that much screen time can cause problems for both the kids and their parents. It's been called the digital babysitter, and it's a large part of many families' routine for one simple reason. It's easy. You just turn it on. You don't have to do anything. But although TV watching may be an easy way to keep kids entertained, it may come at a cost, according to Dr. Dorothy Singer, who literally wrote the book on the effects of media on children. So that we are finding a significant correlation between heavy viewing of television and negative behavior. And we have found that teachers find that children have a shorter attention span. Fourth grade teacher Susan Samsel also says she notices the effects of television watching in her classroom. I think they expect me kind of to be kind of that role of the TV show. And I would say to them, I, I, I am not a video game. And at home with her five-year-old son. Any kind of background um, noise is, is not good for him. A lot of times when we give him directions, the TV has to be off because if the TV's on, it's very hard for him to listen and follow directions. And according to Susan, the television is on for much of the day. I think it's just a natural reaction. You come home, you turn it on. A study in the journal Pediatrics says that the average child watches for 80 minutes a day. On top of that, kids are exposed to three to five hours of inactive TV watching. Those hours are linked to problems with attention, aggression, and even obesity. But we do know that with the TV being on, children do glance at it, they look at it, it does interfere, and at some level they are processing the information, which is the background TV, and that does have some effect on their ability to really concentrate and to perform cognitive acts. Both the study and Dr. Singer say that there needs to be more research into the correlation between inactive TV viewing and children. Both say that the best things parents can do is to monitor children's television time and replace it with other activities, such as outdoor sports, reading, and even playing some good old-fashioned games. For Q30 News, this is Noah Golden. There's recently been a push among lawmakers to try and stop the rising obesity rates, especially in low-income areas. Some experts say this is due to a lack of access to healthier food options in these areas. Samantha Plour takes a look. Obesity rates across the United States are growing along with people's waistlines. Right now, over one-third of Americans are obese, and those with low income are falling victim to the increase. Part of the problem may be a lack of healthy food options in low-income areas, and it's forcing people to turn to cheaper fast food. Leah Derisi helps run Time and Season, a local organic food mart in Hamden. She says that eating organic is a much healthier option than fast food. But buying natural food might not be an option for people with low income because organic products tend to cost more than regular groceries. It has been thought that adding more grocery stores to low income areas will help people choose fresh and healthy options. A study published in the Archives of Internal Medicine found that although there was a link between fast food consumption and the proximity to fast food restaurants, they found there was no diet benefits to adding more supermarkets in these low-income areas. And for people on the go, cooking food isn't always an option either.
But there are serious health risks for those who consume fast food on a daily basis. People who turn to these unhealthy options because of their low cost should know they have other options that won't drain their wallets. Maybe our best hope in the battle against the bulge is education. For Q30 News, this is Samantha Plourd reporting. Coming up after the break, BPA. We see it on our food labels, but what does it mean? More importantly, what does it mean for our health? Mary Caitlin Harding investigates. And is it an icicle or an iceberg? And it has its own Twitter. Stick around for the amazing video next. Plus, our own Maddie Holiday has the world news. Keep it tuned to Q30. We'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q-Cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. BPA. BPA, we see it on our food labels, but what does it mean? More importantly, what does it mean for our health? Mary Caitlin Harding investigates. BPA is a small word that's causing big controversy. Um, BPA stands for bisphenol A, and it's actually, it's a chemical used, it's an industrial chemical. It's been used since the 1960s. Um, its main purpose was to use in the hardening of various plastics. It's also been used as like a protective lining inside metal cans. Studies have shown this chemical could be a cause for a series of diseases like cancer, obesity, diabetes, even ADHD. The problem is, it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous in the environment because think of all the plastics that we have. It's in medical devices, it's in uh, food containers like I said, beverage containers. Used to be in um, for babies in sippy cups and bottles, bottle, um, plastic bottles. And one of the biggest things that I want to mention is it's, um, you know, the, the receipts that you'll get, like if you're at a gas station, yeah. those thermal printed receipts are coated in BPA. After reports were released that found traces of BPA in 90% of Americans, there's been an increased awareness of the effects BPA could have. So as a new mom, it's my rationale to just do the better thing and make the better choice. Aisles like these are ones that consumers need to be wary of. The only sure way to avoid BPA is to not buy plastic bottles and instead buy the glass alternative. You know, there's glass. Glass is my favorite thing. Ceramics, um, stainless steel, all of those things are better choices. They're more inert. Last March, the FDA decided against banning BPA. But on a local level, 11 different states have been creating their own bans on BPA. While state officials and some scientists are aiming to stop BPA, not everyone is sure that it's something to be worried about. I think there's a lot of like, you know, uh, fear mongering like with this stuff because it's not too necessarily proven. As more studies continue to come out, we will wait to see if 2013 is the year that the FDA bans BPA. Mary Keelan Harding, QNN News. Now we all know that diamonds really are a girl's best friend, but a Florida woman panicked when the diamond in her engagement ring suddenly disappeared. She was wearing the three carat diamond while heading to PetSmart, but noticed it was missing on her way home. Luckily, the manager at PetSmart found the $30,000 diamond in the corner of the store and returned it to its owners. And take a look at this massive icicle in Canada. Instead of being the typical three inches or so tall, this thing is three stories tall. The icicle, or rather iceberg, formed on the side of an apartment building as snow melted off the roof. The fire department was worried the icicle would cause serious damage, so firefighters chopped it down, but not before it got its own Twitter handle, Giant Icicle. Can you believe that? A three-story tall icicle. I saw in the video they were literally having to chop it off with a saw, and that was in Canada, so 
pretty it's crazy stuff. It's crazy. But there's also some crazy news going on in the rest of the world. You know, Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez did pass away yesterday. Crazy, very controversial story because many people in Venezuela, they're either happy about it or they're upset about it. So it's interesting. You know, we want to take a look at them. Yeah, I heard there's a lot of mixed reactions. Um, some people are sad, some people are really happy about it. But um, Maddie Holloway has more for us about that. Maddie? Hi, I'm Maddie Holloway with your World News. Hugo Chavez, president of Venezuela, was announced dead yesterday afternoon. Chavez was battling cancer for a few years. His ascent to the presidency in 1999 began a new era in Venezuelan politics and its international relations. He was known for making speeches about the evils of capitalism and was the first of a wave of left-wing leaders to come to power in Latin America in the last dozen years. Chavez was 58 years old. And Target, the popular American retail giant, has recently opened stores in Canada. These are the first stores to open outside the U.S., and Target hopes to hit the bullseye with consumers. Analysts say that due to labor costs, there's a higher price tag in Canada. Other factors are that the minimum wage is higher than in the U.S., and there is less competition. The three Target stores that open west of Toronto will grow to a chain of more than 120 across the country by the end of the year. And North Korea intensified its already uneasy relationship with the West, as well as its southern neighbors. The controversial government threatened to end the armistice agreement that ended the Korean War. Allegedly, North Korea's threat comes after the international response of the U.S. to nuclear testing. The end of the joint military armistice agreement will be in effect starting March 11th. And back to the front desk. Thank you, Maddie. So, we have another storm coming. Yes, I heard. I heard we're supposed to get between three to six inches by Friday? Yeah, it's some crazy report. Supposedly it's this storm that's going to last three days, and they divided it up into three parts. We're getting a section tonight, we're getting a section tomorrow afternoon, and then we're going to be getting a section Thursday night into Friday morning. Yeah. So, it's pretty interesting. I hope it doesn't interfere with people's commute back home. Yeah, their commute back home, commuters in general, because we have midterms going on. So, we're going to throw it over now to our meteorologist Chandler. Give us the update. Good evening, I'm Chandler Thornton with your Q30 weather. Coming up, we'll take a look at tonight's forecast with a chance of even more snow, so stick around, we'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4. Giant cheesesteak subs and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q Cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. Welcome back. I'm Chandler Thornton with your weather forecast. So looking at our local temperatures, we're looking at Norwich around 36 and up in stores around 36 as well. And down in New London, we're looking at 38. Over in Waterbury, it's around 37 and down in New Haven, we're getting to 40. So now to our national temps. So down in Texas and Dallas, we're around 59. Over in uh, San Francisco, around 54. And Los Angeles, 58. And over in New York, we're getting around 41. And Washington, 40. Now to our radar. So oops, just below us, it's around. Um, it's getting a mixture of rain and snow right now. And we should be getting some snow later on tonight, probably around 10 or 11, and um, probably going to carry into tomorrow. So let's look at tonight's forecast. So getting down to about 36 tonight with a big chance of snow and wind coming in around 19 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow we should be getting around 36 as well with the, uh, the snow carrying over and wind picking up to about 25 miles per hour. So let's look at our seven day forecast. So for this weekend, snow coming in with around 38 and 39 degrees and hopefully clearing up for um, Saturday and Sunday for spring break and then over into next week should be getting around partly cloudy again with 49 and 50 degrees and hopefully clearing up by next Wednesday. Thanks. Back to the desk. Thank you, Chandler. Hopefully we won't be getting snowed in again. I don't think we will, but let's just pray. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's clearing up next week. Mm -hmm. But I heard there's going to be some new judges on America's Got Talent oh, for the really eighth now. season. Do yeah. you know who it is? Have you heard? Um, I don't know, but rumor has it that a former Spice Girl may be oh, one of them. That'll shake things up. They definitely, or that Spice yeah. Girl definitely had talent. Let's throw it over now to our girls at entertainment to hear more about it. America's Got Talent has got some new talent. Heidi Klum, host and executive producer of Project Runway, along with Mel B of the Spice Girls, will be joining the hit show for its eighth 
season in May. The two will be joining returning judges Howard Stern and Howie Mandel. The table of judges has expanded this season, featuring four judges for the first time. And also three cast members of Modern Family were trapped in an elevator for an hour in Kansas City. Castmates Julie Brown, Eric Stone Street, and Jesse Tyler Ferguson were part of 15 passengers that were trapped in the hotel elevator. The stars joked around about the incident by tweeting a video of them and officials leaving the shaft saying, get us out. The three were attending a fundraiser in Stone Street's hometown and later thanked the fire department for getting them out safely. Barbara Walters is back on The View after battling a case of the chicken pox. She was out for six weeks after getting over the disease plus a concussion. She fell at the British ambassador's residence this past January. Walters says, as I was walking down the stairs, I suddenly felt a little woozy, fainted, and hit my head on the marble floor. Walters is now healthy and even showed off her scars a joke on the show. She joked around and said she spent time resting and screaming at the television while watching The View. Well, that's all in entertainment this week. Back to you guys. Thank you, ladies. So nice to see she's returned to the desk. Yeah, she definitely. She just brings a really great personality. Yeah, it's just too quiet without her. Yeah, exactly. So. As we all know, the sports buzz is still ringing out loud here at Quinnipiac. Now, our women's basketball team did something historic this past weekend. First time in their history, first time in the school's history. It's great stuff, and we're going to be hearing more about that. And our men's basketball team, the men's hockey team continues. And I think we're going to throw it over now to yeah. our own Jasmine, Jasmine Martin. Thank you. Playoffs are near, and only a few winter sports remain. Stick around. Sports is up next after the break. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. The men's basketball team faced LIU this past weekend as they were defeated 96-90. The first half belonged to Quinnipiac as they went into the halftime up 11. Unfortunately, the, the fast-paced offense of LIU was too much for the Bobcats to handle. They lost their chance to host the NEC playoff game in the upcoming tournament. The men's team dropped to the sixth seed and will be traveling back to Brooklyn to face the Blackbirds in the NEC quarterfinals on Wednesday night. We wish you luck. Monday night, the Quinnipiac women's basketball team made history, becoming the fourth team to complete a perfect Northeast Conference regular season. The Bobcats improved to 18-0 with a 73-54 victory over St. Francis, Brooklyn. With the win, Quinnipiac improved to 27-2 overall, which also gives them the best NEC record for most single wins in a season. With 19 straight wins, the Bobcats clinched the number one seed for the upcoming NEC tournament as they host the number eight seed Bryant this upcoming Sunday. Good luck, ladies. And the number four seed Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team was eliminated from the ECAC hockey playoffs after a 2-0 loss to the number five seed, St. Lawrence, this Sunday. After a 3-2 win and a big comeback the night before, which went into three overtimes, the Bobcats wouldn't be able to overcome the Saints. Senior Victoria Vigilante, who was playing in her 133rd career game, took a hard loss after a 19-game save. She ends her career as the all-time leader in every st statistical category. Quinnipiac closes out the season and the career of the six of their seniors. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Jasmine. So good to hear about the success of yeah, the women's definitely. team. Definitely. And that'll do it for Q30 News tonight. If you would like to get involved in Q30 News, please visit our website at www.q30.org. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week with the latest in local and Quinnipiac news. Have a good night.